So the Nevada agriculture sector is made up of two main uh, groupings, uh, traditional agriculture, farming and ranching, and also food and beverage manufacturing. Those together have approximately $4.71 billion in economic output for 2020. Uh, the sector created over 18,000 direct jobs and over $113 million in wages. So here is a quick snapshot or a quick overview of those two portions of the ag sector compared. The blue bar on your screen is the food and beverage manufacturing uh, areas and the green bars are the farming and ranching. If you can see here on uh, 2019, uh, the food and beverage manufacturing took a bit of a dip in 2019. That was predominantly due to the previous administration's trade policies. And so there was some significant uh, declines in trade over those times, which uh, affected the economic output. The uh, farming and ranching industries also had effects. However, there was an influx of federal funding to support those industries because of the trade impacts. And so you don't see the same dip reflected here in 2019. In 2020, it's still lower than in previous years, but we are seeing a bit of a rebound uh, in those trade impacts in 2020. Uh, but the green bar is significantly lower and that is reflective of the COVID-19 impacts. This is not including the CARES Act funding or federal funding. And so that is what is reflected here on this graph. To give you an idea of the impacts for, of the trade impacts versus COVID-19, uh, this is an overall graph of uh, agricultural wages and salaries. From about mid 2018, the trade conflicts, conflicts did have a significant impact uh, on wages and salaries in the agriculture sector. COVID-19 did have some impacts, but it's clear that uh, for this sector, the trade policies have had significant impacts uh, over the last uh, two years. This is an even deeper dive into the farming and ranching portion. Uh, this is the blue bar is animals and animal products and the green bar is crops. Uh, the 2020 numbers are projected on this graph, but you are seeing as far as gross income trend, a difference between 2019 and 2020 um, and that is predominantly due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, we all heard in the news about problems with processing facilities, uh, facilities closing due to workers with COVID-19, and, and that has backed up the supply chain uh, and, and has had impact uh, on Nevada because of those factors. This gives you an overall view of agriculture in Nevada. Uh, less than 25% of our farms and ranches are considered large farms and ranches, 500 acres and above. So the majority of the farm and farms and ranches in the state of Nevada are on the smaller to medium sized range. Going to the food and beverage manufacturing in the state, like I mentioned before, the total economic output in 2020 is $3.925 billion, with the top three manufacturing categories of bottled and canned soft drinks and water, bread and bakery products, and that's fresh, not frozen, and fluid milk manufacturing. The state of Nevada over the last, or the Department of Agriculture actually, over the last uh, year and a half has done a lot of work in uh, surveying and collecting our own economic data. We've found that the economic data available nationally uh, really takes that national data and extrapolates it to the states. And we found that that creates some major gaps in reporting, uh, at least for our state. And so we've started on a bit of a campaign to collect our own economic data. And I've included some of that here. 80 small to medium sized manufacturers generated approximately $640 million in revenue with $80 million in expenses. Um, what I think is really interesting, what we have found through collecting our own data is approximately 90% of production of food and beverage manufacturing took place in the state. 
So that means that, you know, these companies don't just have corporate offices here, that the actual production is taking place here. And having that knowledge is really important for future decision making and, and economic development work. So the hemp industry was a big topic at last year's uh, vision meeting, and uh, it's a big topic this year, but not for the right reasons. We have seen a significant decline in the hemp industry um, this, this season, um, mostly due to two reasons. The first being the price of CBD has decreased significantly, and so uh, it's not a, a great of a market opportunity as it once was. And the second reason uh, is that the hemp industry has been for the last two years on a bit of a regulatory roller coaster. With USDA, uh, the 2018 Farm Bill came out, then there was an interim final rule, then there was some comments and a revision, and now the final rule did come out, out last week. And so we're hoping that that regulatory um, basically roller coaster has calmed down quite a bit and is making it easier for investment in this sector. So we will see what happens over the coming year. So the impacts of COVID-19, we don't have a complete handle on what that has done to agriculture thus far. Uh, in some areas, it's not had as great of an impact. In other areas, it has had a great impact. Uh, very early on, the Department of Agriculture uh, sent out a survey to these four industries, crop, livestock, food and beverage, manufacturing, and hemp, to determine the perception of the COVID-19 pandemic on uh, the sector. And so uh, these numbers really reflect the perception of the industry. And so um, we'll track it and we'll see what the actual um, impact of COVID-19 will be in the coming years. Um, but you can see that it's, it's obvious that these industries think that, the, that COVID-19 has a very high impact on them. The state of Nevada have received economic stimulus, uh, approximately $65 million in economic st uh, stimulus to the state. Most of that uh, occurred in the first and second rounds of CFAP. Uh, we did have funding come through the Paycheck Protection Program, and as well as the Department of Agriculture distributed the state allocation of CARES funds. Uh, we were able to distribute some funding to assist with the distribution and logistic supply chain of agricultural products and also supporting end market so that uh, especially those smaller and uh, smaller farmers and ranchers can get their products to market easier. Moving on to trade. So this is an overview of the annual totals for trade in Nevada. Uh, as we said before, in 2018, the trade policies did create a, a dip for uh, industry in Nevada, a slight rebound in 2019 and 2020 is projected to look a lot better. Uh, however, there's a lot of red on this graph. So here is a list of Nevada's uh, largest, largest trading countries by order of 2020 exports. So if you see South Korea up here at the top is our highest trading partner for 2020. This is predominantly due to the Starbucks roasting plant in Carson Valley. Uh, South Korea has a rapidly expanding middle class and uh, therefore rapidly expanding Starbucks locations. And so uh, there is a lot of trade coming uh, from South Korea to, uh, out of that Carson Valley plant. Uh, the next largest trading partner, Canada, uh, it has decreased and that is due to trade tensions over the last two years from Canada uh, and from the U.S. Um, and Peru, Peru has significantly increased as a trading partner for Nevada. Um, that really is due to the fact that both Canada and Mexico has decreased. And so Peru was able to come in uh, and buy up some of that excess product, uh, especially in the dairy fluid milk area. And so um, Peru has become a very large trading partner for 
uh, Nevada agriculture and uh, food manufacturing. Um, like I said, this graph is pretty red and uh, we anticipate the uh, trade to slowly rebound as the global impacts of COVID ease and, um, and we'll wait to see what the new administration um, will do when regards to international trade of agricultural products. So here's a quick snapshot of our top 10 exports. Coffee, obviously, uh, our largest we talked about, dairy, and then on down. And here is a quick uh, outline of the threats and opportunities for the outlook, the economic outlook for 2021. I've talked about trade, I've talked about COVID-19, so I'll just quickly go over uh, the two areas that are not those categories, uh, opportunities. Um, Asia and Europe has uh, seen a spread of African swine fever, uh, which gives opportunities to the US to replace those protein sources for those markets. And so that is an opportunity for uh, our farmers and ranchers. And the drought in South America, they are experiencing se severe drought in South America, which uh, will place more of a demand on US agriculture. The threats, uh, the interesting one I think is federal funding. Uh, in the last two years, the agriculture sector has seen significant funding from federal sources to support the industries and the markets due to trade and COVID-19. And so uh, if that funding declines or is there's a drop in funding that will definitely put a downward pressure on the commodity prices, which will uh, be a threat to the industry. And then we have our own weather problems, especially here in the West. So uh, drought conditions will impact crop and livestock production uh, over the next year. So upcoming priorities from the department. Uh, obviously we are gonna continue to work on uh, COVID-19 impacts, uh, food security and food distribution. We will continue to address and uh, support. We've um, done a lot of that over the last 10 months and we'll continue to do so. Trade support, uh, we're continuing to support our trading partners. We will, um, you know, <laughs> trade missions, trade shows, travel is not happening right now. And with uh, Zoom fatigue for everybody. It's been a, a difficult road to get Nevada products into some of those international markets. And so we're continuing to work on that, supporting our companies that are interested in selling overseas and um, just trying to find innovative ways to reach out to those buyers. Uh, workforce development is another area that we're continuing to uh, work on. Uh, our ag industry um, because of immigration issues, because of workforce issues and training um, has seen a decline in workforce. And so we should have a pretty exciting announcement about workforce development uh, in the coming weeks. And industry processing. Uh, this is a personal passion of mine. A, you know, Nevada is really behind the game when it comes to processing for agriculture, both on the animal side uh, and on the fruit and vegetable and crop side. Um, our producers uh, have a higher cost of um, business because they have to um, transport their products out of state for processing um, to then transport them back in state to uh, sell and market. Um, and, and there's a lag in that industry because of our lack of processing. So uh, we're working on processing on two fronts. One is uh, looking for investment opportunities and assisting in investment opportunities in processing and to uh, really make it inviting uh, for companies to invest or to expand uh, in our state. In, and the second is clearing regulatory hurdles. Uh, there, there are significant state level regulatory hurdles that impact processing. And so uh, this summer, uh, we started putting uh, plans in place and starting tackling those regulatory hurdles. And so we're hoping that uh, some of that will be solved uh, by th this coming summer or uh, next fall. So we're really looking forward 
to that. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm so thrilled to discuss this with you. Um, and uh, just so everyone knows that our uh, economic analysis will be released uh, at the beginning of February. And so um, I'm happy to provide copies to UNR and uh, not sure how we can get it to the attendees, but we're happy to make a make an attempt to do so. So here's my contact information if anybody has any questions or is interested in a copy of the economic analysis. Um, it's completely revised, uh, looks completely different than years past, and we're really proud of it and excited about it. So thank you so much for your time.